Good morning to you both. Uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Steve Bosque. I'm the opinion editor of the Sun Sentinel. Uh, I've been reporting on politics in Broward County for a very long time. So, so has my colleague Dan Sweeney, who's with us this morning. Um, and uh, we also have invited the third Democrat in this race, Lisa Dunkley, uh, she was also received an invitation to join this joint interview. So I want to say thank you to both of you for, for participating and thank you both for filling out questionnaires. And uh, good luck to you both. Uh, I'm going to begin with you, uh, Kelly Scurry. Um, you've got a very interesting uh, campaign website and you're, uh, you're off and running. Uh, you said you said in your biographical information you are the nephew of George Allen. Now, uh, I I knew George Allen well. Uh, mm -hmm. The late George Allen was a pioneer civil rights attorney in Fort Lauderdale. A mm -hmm. uh, proud grad, you, uh, law graduate of the University of Florida. Uh, but but uh, I'd like you to tell me uh, how George Allen influenced your life. Uh, yes, yes. Um, yeah, the late W. George Allen, uh, you know, who initiated the lawsuit or was the filing attorney for the lawsuit that desegregated Broward County Schools was my uncle. And uh, he influenced my life, I'd say, both directly and uh, indirectly, uh, I guess, from an indirect standpoint, from the standpoint of of being an influence to my father to to also him, for himself to go to college, which then had the the down ballot effect of both his younger siblings and also uh, the the next generation, such as myself, to be able to go to go to college, uh, which you know, not as many people were going to college in the '40s and '50s and '60s, let alone Af uh, Af poor African Americans in the South. And so, you know, he did have that influence in making certain things possible. And then, from a direct impact, you know, he influenced because he desegregated the University of Florida now, as a Gator alumnus and as the son of a Gator alumna. My mother went to the University of Florida as well. You know, the the step that that the Uncle George took enabled a lot of African Americans to go to the University of Florida, many of which would not have gone before, and helped facilitate a more peaceful transition than occurred at other Southern universities. And then also he had an impact because uh, he showed that when there is injustice and when there are problems in the community, that one can take steps to solve them. So often, what people would do is like when they say, uh, like even like throughout you know, during Jim Crow, there were a lot of people who took the position of well, you know that's just the way things are. I mean, case in point, President Carter, Mrs. Carter pointed out that when they were growing up, they didn't think about it because that was just the way things were. And yet, and for many African Americans that were facing that injustice, although they didn't like it, some of them were worried about whether they would be able to solve it or resolve it. And Good yet, idea. he took the point of saying that, you know what, rather than just accept it, let's fight and make the change for it. Okay. Ms. Faruqi, let me just ask you a bro an open ended question. I'd, I'd like to know uh, uh, who, who has influenced you in your life uh, in a positive way that, 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 had the effect of you wanted to seek public office. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for having me today. And um, um, I, um, I I came from a very um, normal, regular working class background. Um, my father um, always had worked for the community and um, he has raised uh, six other daughters, including me. Um, uh, to make sure that we really work hard to achieve what we achieve um, and what we can do for the communities. So I would say um, my father and my uh, working class family has uh, uh, an influence or, on me and my life to see that how I can help other working class families. And as I said, my district is um, solely based on um, very hardworking uh, class families. So that's the biggest influence in my life. It's uh, my life experiences, I would say. Tell us the cities that are, tell us the cities that are in House District 97. Um, House District encompasses um, North Lauderdale, Lauderdale Lakes, uh, Sunrise, Plantation, Lauderdale Hills, um, and uh, Fort Lauderdale, a very little area. Is there any part of Tamarack in the district? And Tamarack, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, okay, Tamarack, okay. 
a very little part of Tamarack, close to North Lauderdale. Mr. Scurry, brief, speaking briefly, be as concise as you can. What, okay. You've been in Broward County a while. What distinguishes this legislative district from all the others? What makes it different? Well, I think what makes it different is one, the fact that it is very diverse. It's almost, I would say that our district is almost pretty representative of South Florida as a whole in terms of people from different backgrounds and from uh, different racial groups, ethnic groups, religious groups. So it is very diverse. And I think what also makes it uh, unique is the fact that uh, we are right in the center of the county. And so therefore, uh, we are currently dealing with a lot of the growth issues that Broward ha has been dealing with, whether it's the byproducts of poor plan growth in the past, but then also dealing with the ability of planning growth in the future. Okay. Mr. Scurry, have you, uh, t tell us a, a, an anecdote if, if the answer is yes. Have you personally, have you been to Tallahassee, been to the state capitol, attended a legislative committee meeting, anything like that? Mm -hmm. uh, I have, I've been to Tallahassee before, uh, and I, uh, as it pertains to watching these legislative sessions or participating in legislative sessions, I have not been to Tallahassee specifically to watch those things. I have followed them online. Uh, but in terms of Tallahassee, um, I did go to Tallahassee. I you know, did, we did go first time when I was in high school, and then also, of course, when it came time to uh, filing. But for the most part, I followed it you know, virtually uh, through the paper and then online, watching things online. Okay. Tell us in round numbers. It doesn't have to be exact, but it should be close. What's the, what's the size of the current state budget? Hmm. I'd say the uh, I'd say you know the the uh, current state budget you know, is definitely you know, pretty high. Of, of course, you know I guess on the spot the number escapes me, but you know it's in the you know it's you know in the in the millions. In the millions, okay, Miss Faruqi, can you help us? What's the approximate size of the current state budget in Florida? The approximate size of the budget is one hundred and five point. Three billion dollars. Okay, that's that's pretty close. That's a that sounds a little high, and maybe it doesn't take into account what the governor vetoed. Um, uh, I'm just I'm going to speak for my colleagues at the Sun Sentinel. We don't think we don't think it's setting the bar too high that a person who holds himself out as a candidate for the Florida legislature, you know, uh, should know roughly what the size of the state budget is. If you're elected to this position, you're going to have to hit the ground running, and things are going to move extremely quickly in mm -hmm. Tallahassee. Take my word for it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I would advise you to, uh, to 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 do your homework, uh, Miss Fer Miss Faruqi. I've got a question about the city of North Lauderdale, which is in this district. Uh, it's one of the youngest cities in the in the community. It's uh, in, in Broward. It was formed in 1963. Tell me, tell me a particular problem or issue or challenge in the city of North Lauderdale where the legislature could help. So um, I call North Lauderdale as um, my hometown when I came to U.S. I stayed in North Lauderdale, and that's why um, uh, you can see my deep connections with the uh, city of North Lauderdale. And I'm also um, uh, endorsed by two of the elected officials from the city. Um, uh, you can, um, um, I would say um, the biggest issue that I would say is housing in North Lauderdale. Um, it's a very diverse community. My kids used to go to school and uh, uh, Pinewood Elementary School, I would never forget. Um, so I have seen um, the issues there, but the housing, I would say the most um, uh, depressing issue in North Lauderdale. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna open the floor to my colleague, Dan Sweeney. Yeah, uh, one, one thing I definitely wanted to ask about, uh, we asked on our questionnaire, name one issue, in which you agree very strongly with Governor Ron DeSantis, something that he did. And generally speaking, when we ask this question on Democratic questionnaires, you get kind of, well, one response is, I can't think of anything. And then uh, the, the other, the more common ones, though, are, are you know, uh, Everglades funding or, um, uh, you know, uh, the, the the vetoes he he, uh, he took on a couple of bills this year. Um, but you guys both went with, with some very deep cuts. And I wanted to ask, ask you both about that. Um, uh, Sema, you you said uh, SB seven two two education uh, for the the incarcerated. 
-hmm. of all the things you could have gone with, why uh, why did that one stand out to you as as something that you wanted to highlight? As I said, um, I really uh, believe that if um, we have better education, then the issues and problems that we face, uh, that's the key. And that's why um, I said my kids, they have gone to school and then I see when um, the inmates and incarcerated people would have proper education. Um, education is the key and then people can get the uh, better means of um, uh, getting their livelihood up to the standard. So that's why that really stands out um, for me, especially. Okay. And then life experiences, as I said, uh, my father worked very hard to send me college and that's why I am what I am. So I can see the, and I can correlate that why education is the key and why it's very important. Okay, um, uh, Kelly, uh, I've seen vetoes elsewhere as well on, on questionnaires. A lot of times though, it's vetoes from, uh, from the current session, uh, particularly you see a lot of, uh, you know, there was a bill that would have allowed businesses to sue uh, if a local ordinance caused a loss of profits uh, that the governor vetoed. And that was sort of a, a, a whew moment for a, a, a lot of people. But uh, you went with plastic straws, which I believe was two or three sessions ago. And I wanted to ask you, why the plastic straw uh, veto particularly stands out? Yes, uh, I went with the plastic straw uh, veto because uh, I one I thought was an instance of the governor respecting uh, home rule, and then also uh, it you know played a role. It, it considered the fact that you know we are in the midst of an environmental climate crisis, and and you know there are a variety of ways in which then we would need to, to handle those things. And uh, one of the things in which people you know, discuss about is whether they're about whether plastic straws are the best way of you going about those things. And rather than um, implementing a bill that would have removed uh, a, a particular tool to address the climate you know, crisis uh, from the, uh, from the, uh, toolbox of solutions for local governments and said, you know, I, I appreciate the fact that the governor at least enabled some local governments to be able to at least consider certain um, certain uh, types of responses so that we can all come together, figure out what is the best way of handling it rather than a, a more top down approach from Tallahassee. OK, um, Sam, you you've run for the legislature before. Uh, if memory serves me right, you ran against uh, did more in two years ago? Is that right? No. Um, no. Christine Hunchowski. Two years ago. Christine Hunchowski. Okay. Um, what makes you a better candidate today than you were two years ago? Um, again, life experiences and living uh, within the communities. And then um, I have been um, working in different leadership positions. And um, I can say that experience matters. and um, when you are out there and uh, working with um, uh, different communities out there and, and um, working as in, in, a, in leadership position, you can see the problems and then you can provide better solutions. Um, I'm not someone has political dynasty that uh, something is given to me in the plate, so I can tell that how much uh, or how work hard that I have to do uh, to get uh, to these positions and how much I have to get involved uh, with uh, with people to know what they're going through. So um, I would say experience makes me better candidate in this race. Okay, you, you, you said just now that uh, over the last couple of years, uh, you've, uh, you've had some leadership positions and organizations. Can you be a little more specific there? Uh, what, what exactly that means? So I am um, a vice president of the um, Democratic Club. Um, also, I have served on um, um, a board, environmental caucus board, um, progressive caucus board, um, as I said, different democratic leadership positions um, I have held in, in the past, but I'm um, on leave of absence on a few of them. I currently hold some positions and uh, some very strong um, civil, uh, uh, civil rights um, organizations that I really don't want to mention, but I do have, um, Positions, uh, leadership positions that I have held. What? What? Why? Why do you not want to mention them? Because um, on my campaign trail, I'm not supposed to, but I do work with I different see. organizations. Yes. 
Um, so, okay, Steve, for, 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 for now, I'm sorry. Without, with, 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 yeah. same, with, with, without mentioning the organizations by name. You're, um, you're breaking uh, up, Steve. I oh, can oh. only hear part of the question. Okay. Dan, can you hear me? We, we, I think we can hear you now. Yeah. Okay. Without mentioning the organizations by name, I think the voters deserve to know this. Can you give us an idea what these organizations agenda or what the priorities are? Yes, the priorities are especially, as I said, uh, uh, civil liberties, um, uh, voting rights is my passion, as I said, um, standing up for um, uh, marginalized communities that they don't have voice. And um, um, so those are some of the agendas that uh, those organizations carry. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Kelly Scurry. Kelly, Kelly, can you hear me okay, Kelly? Uh, yes, yes, I can. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm, I'm riding in a motor vehicle, so unavoidably, but uh, that explains the occasional maybe disruption. Sorry about that. Um, my question to you, sir, is as a first-time candidate for the legislature, have you had occasion in this campaign to reach out to and ask for ask the supervisor of elections for information to help you run a better campaign? He could provide uh, lists of past primary voters and Democratic primaries. He, know, he knows exactly who in the city of North Lauderdale voted in the primary two years ago. Have you asked him for that information? Uh, I have reached out to the supervisor of elections office to ask for you know, voter, voter file information, uh, to, whether it's for North Lauderdale or for other cities within or other parts of the district that are, are within the, the, the district. So yes, I, I have reached out to the supervisor's office. Okay, and, and as a grassroots candidate, tell me, tell Dan and me, tell us what a walking list is. A walking list. Uh, a walking list, um, at least from the way that you know, we would utilize it, a walking list would just be a matter of, you know, we go you know, knocking door to door and, uh, and you just determine, I guess, the places or the neighborhoods in which one would walk and then go and uh, determine, you know, the people in the community in which you want to, uh, to speak to and then determine and uh, to approach them and then try to ask for their vote. Have you have you been walking door to door in the district? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, I, yes, I have. You know, I, I've been you know, going door to door. I've been introducing myself to the, the voters of the district and either introducing myself or reacquainting them uh, to let them know, you know that who, the, who I am, let them know that I am from the district, that I live in the district, and that I am currently seeking their vote so that they can have a fire you know, in Tallahassee representing them. Uh, have you had any feedback from voters uh, that suggests that they are either confused about what district they live in, uh, are not aware that there's an election coming up, are not aware where they're supposed to vote, issues like that? Uh, I have come across some instances of people uh, being confused about which district that they are in, You know, given that redistricting did just occur. Uh, and with also other things that are going on, there are people that haven't quite made the connection that uh, that like, for example, this used to be District 95, and so therefore there are people who don't quite realize that, that 95 has now become 97 you know, with you know, redistricting changes. And then there are also people who, um, you know, some people, who, a few people who were, I guess, who had requested mail-in ballot who were waiting on the ballot. Um, uh, but I haven't yet come across anybody who was not aware that an election was taking place. Just some people that um, did, weren't aware of the fact that, that that the redistricting uh, had occurred. Okay. Um, the same question for you, Ms. Faruqi. That is just generally, uh, are you walking door to door? And what are you hearing from voters as in terms of their level of awareness about the election? Um, yes, I am walking and I'm getting very good response. Um, um, people are welcoming me. Most of them uh, know me from my previous run. Um, also, um, um, I have been endorsed by a Black Caucus um, um, of Broward. So um, um, the main concern that I have seen, uh, I think there's a misconfusion um, when people receive that water information card, they thought that it's a, a water registration card. So I just had to um, educate them that please expect another card. This is just a water information card. Um, and um, I also have provided a district map on my social media, 
where um, people can just simply click and uh, they can see uh, the district boundaries and where uh, even their house and their streets would be showing within inside the map. And I have uh, gotten that information from um, SOE, of, of course. Ms. Faruqi, if you're, if you're elected to the Florida House in this election, uh, what's the most important legislative committee that you'd want to be a member of? Um, housing. Housing. Okay. Um, and why is that the most important? Um, because as I uh, mentioned, that housing is a very depressing issue uh, in the district. The eviction rates, if you see, um, in surrounding um, areas, um, it's um, very high, almost like, um, I would say, um, the, the data that I have collected from uh, census from 2019, um, the large area, which is um, almost 20%, uh, more than 20% of the population on, uh, uh, in that area is below poverty, um, uh, poverty line. So housing is the most depressing issue, um, eviction, high eviction rate. So that's the reason I want to serve on that. Same question for you, Mr. Scurry. What's the most important legislative committee to be on? Uh, I guess for the most important, I, uh, I'd be torn between, I guess, either it'd be judiciary or appropriations or or veterans affairs. Uh, you know, it's you know kind of hard to pick you know, which one is the most important, but at the same time, those are all issues that, that you know, are personal to me and that also uh, deal with a lot of the issues that directly affect the members of the, of, of the district. And for example, even as it pertains to you know, getting um, better paying jobs to the community or even in terms of providing more affordable housing uh, for, for one, the appropriation process you know, can help, you know, to ensure that there are resources that are allocated to the district uh, to, and also it would enable me to, it would enable me to ensure that, that my district has the, uh, the best representation possible uh, and, to, uh, and to ensure that we have that representation that is on par or superior to the representation that other, uh, other districts have. And even as per, pertains to judiciary, uh, you know, as a as an attorney, uh, you know I understand you know very many aspects the uh, the the long ranging aspects of the implication that many of the proposed bills have. Um, is, you know as a, as an attorney, you know I'm tra trained and analyzed to look at certain issues and and situations in a particular way, and that would enable me to, I believe, be an effective uh, legislator, uh, filling in from that capacity. Okay. Yeah, Ms. Faruqi, um, I, there's no doubt that you're correct that housing is an incredibly serious problem, but I have some bad news. Uh, there is no legislative committee on housing. There probably should be, but there isn't. Um, and you, you raise an excellent point. That might be, might be something you'd want to consider, uh, getting the legislature to pay more attention to this. But there's no, there's no legislative committee that I'm aware of that exclusively deals with housing issues. So I just wanted to pass that on. Dan, I'm going to open the floor to you if you want to jump uh, in again. I, I, I'm going to follow up with Kelly about something that uh, uh, that Sam that I, I asked Sam about, um, which is uh, leadership roles in organizations. Kelly, can you tell me anything, uh, any organizations or uh, you know uh, locally that uh, you're a member of and that have looked at you and decided that you should be uh, in leadership of that organization? Uh, yes, yes. Um, I've been involved with you know, several organizations. Uh, you know, from I'm currently involved with the uh, Brad County Bar Association. I'm currently uh, involved with the uh, T.J. Reddick Bar Association, which is the uh, the African the African American uh, Voluntary Bar Association located within the county. I am a a life member of the NAACP. Uh, I am involved with the with the Urban League of Brad County. I am also involved within your Democratic Party politics. Uh, I am a precinct committee person for my local precinct, and I am also on the executive board for uh, for uh, Broward Young Democrats. And then, in terms of other community involvement, I am involved with a, a local a mentoring program that deals with uh, mentoring and advising uh, uh, middle school and high school uh, students to ensure that they you know, stay on the right track, uh, go to high school, uh, get get as good grades as possible in high school, and then also go to college as well. And then I'm also involved with uh, with you know community outreach programs uh, at my uh, local church. Hey, um 
I, I mentioned like leadership roles though. Is that, are you on, you said you're in the bar, are you, are you are on any bar committees or, you know, any sort of leadership roles in those organizations? Uh, for, well, for, uh, in terms of the, the, the county bar, I'm, I'm not on any leadership position with that, given that, well, one, given that I'm relatively young as an attorney, but then also because of the pandemic that has kind of complicated the ability to be able to get as involved with certain things as possible. In terms of leadership positions, that I am on the executive board for, uh, you know, for uh, Brown Young Democrats, and I am on the executive board for uh, my uh, lo local chapter for the uh, for Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, the Z Alpha Lambda chapter. I am on the executive board for that, in which we are involved in you know, many community service outreach projects, and that is also where uh, my involvement with the uh, with the high school mentoring program uh, you know, takes uh, place. Uh, but I guess with other organizations where I may not necessarily be have a formal leadership role as president or vice president, you know, I definitely. Do you, you know, go to the forefront and you know, am you know, an active member and actively involved? Okay. Just there some organizations they just don't necessarily have like a formal leadership structure beyond the president. Okay, uh, you know, um, to switch subjects this, for for both of you, uh, you know, there's a democratic agenda of things that Democrats would like to see done, uh, and there are also very few Democrats in Tallahassee. Um, so, all the big ideas that are part of the democratic agenda are not passing through this legislature. So I want to, uh, I want you to tell me what is one thing that you, if elected would champion in Tallahassee that you would push to get passed. Uh, um, since Kelly, since you just talked, we'll start with Sama. Um, give me one second. I just have to turn this off. I'm no sorry. Can you just repeat the question? I'm sorry. I yes. just got distracted because of the alarm. It's okay. Uh, so I pointed out that uh, you know the, the, the typical ideas that uh, that are in the Democratic platform are not likely to pass in Tallahassee, which is dominated by Republicans. So give me one idea or one uh, policy proposal that you would push for and get behind and try to pass in Tallahassee that has it that you could actually get done. So it's um there are so many different issues there are bipartisan, as I said, education, housing, uh, health care. There's so Pacific many health. different, um, again, um, housing and education. Those are the two things that I really uh, care about. And um, I, um, I was involved in um, FDP um, platform uh, when, um, it, like, to, uh, of creation of their uh, platform, which, um, uh, involved in um, how to make things better for the communities like um, so um, I really want to recover the Sadowski fund uh, not going for, uh, from different um, like uh, di uh, not appropriate for different um, things just for housing so as I said like there's so many different bipartisan issues um, I would say housing is the best being a homeowner and um, what um, homeowners have to go through to sometimes even pay their mortgages or even if you're renting um, uh, pay the rent and keeping the roof on your head it's very difficult um, um, again my personal experiences being a homeowner and then renter it's it's very difficult and that's why i really want to uh, work towards um, the policies. Okay. So what does the legislature do specifically to help people who are having trouble either buying a house or paying their mortgage? What what what, what, do, you, what do you do? What's your what's your policy proposal specifically? So to make sure that um, in the event of uh, crises, I would have funds available uh, for the uh, for renting assistance, um, uh, mortgage assistance. Um, um, to make sure that people uh, would be able to um, to pay their uh, rent and mortgages. Okay, um, Kelly. Basically, same question. You know, uh, the, the the big ideas that Democrats have are are, are not going to pass in a in a legislature completely dominated by Republicans. Mm -hmm. uh, 
what specific ideas would you champion and see that can get passed in Tallahassee? Mm -hmm. Well, um, I guess in terms of specific policies uh, that can, you know, the champion, um, uh, with all due respect, I believe that limiting ourselves solely to the idea of what can get passed could be counterproductive uh, simply because it causes us to focus more on the differences between the parties. Uh, I, I do know that, you know, because the Democrats are very much within the minority, uh, therefore, it is very difficult for policies that are labeled as quote unquote democratic policies. It may is very difficult, if not impossible, for them to get passed. Uh, but I believe that to get, to get more directly to the question, a, a, a proposed policy that I guess I would champion would be a Medicaid expansion. Uh, Granted, it, that's not necessarily one of those policies in which one would might just automatically say, "Oh, that's something that like can get passed." But that's why I would said that I believe that that limiting ourselves in that way is counterproductive. And I guess I go forward with the idea of the Medicaid expansion because you know we can start from that uh, that idea, that proposal, and then you know you know, work with the other legislators. Uh, in Tallahassee, they've also been elected by our fellow Floridians to determine what is the best way forward and how and whether we can compromise on certain situations or figure out, okay, what can we do? And even though in the past, you know, for for political reasons, the legislature has chosen not to expand the Medicaid as, you know, as uh, permitted under the ACA, you know, things have changed. We are in the midst, you know, we've had you know public health crises for the past you know two years, as we're all aware of, with with COVID nineteen and then varying uh, varying variants that have come about, and then now even with the meningitis outbreak and then the monkeypox outbreak, uh, I believe that uh, that focusing on improving our healthcare options uh, is something that. Uh, hopefully can be perceived not as a democratic issue or as a Republican issue, but a Floridian issue. And so therefore, I believe that a policy that would enable more individuals to uh, receive real adequate health care and be able to have true health care options, uh, regardless of their regardless of their income, um, I believe that championing a, a policy like that is something that uh, would be able to have a you know a fighting chance in Tallahassee, especially in light of of the issues that in the traumas that we uh, all Floridians have dealt with over the past two years. Okay, uh, thank you, Steve. I'll, I'll kick it back over to you. Thank you very much, Dan. Thanks, uh, uh, Ms. Faruqi. You mentioned a few minutes ago you've been endorsed by Black Caucus of Broward. Who's the chair of that organization? Who's the chair for Broward? Who's the chairman of Black Caucus of Broward, which you said Robin, has endorsed? Robin, Say it again. Please. Robin. Her name is Robin. Um, I'm forgetting her last name, but um, her first name is Robin. Okay. Mr. Scurry, uh, can you corroborate that, that, that your opponent has been endorsed by the Black Caucus of Broward? Um, that's my understanding. Um, I haven't received any information of uh, the contrary. Um, and so therefore, you know, I would trust, you know, it, it, it is accurate. Um, um, I mean, I, I didn't receive the communication saying that I was endorsed. So therefore it makes sense that, uh, that, that Simon was endorsed. But at the same time, I've been focusing on you know, meeting, uh, you know, going door to door and, and knocking. So you know, I have been following my email as, as closely as I have in the past. Okay. Uh, politics is about making friendships and forging alliances with people. Uh, Mr. Scurry, is 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 Dale Holness, the former Broward County Commissioner, Dale Holness? Would you consider him a friend? Um, uh, I wouldn't consider him a friend mainly just because um, when we haven't, you know, we haven't really met. You know, we've interacted sometimes, but at the same, you know, through different, you know, community organization. I mean, through different community events. Um. But I wouldn't say that a lack of friendship is not because of like any like animosity. It's more just from the standpoint of you know, you know different interactions. You know, I mean, different gen and different generations too. Uh, so I wouldn't be able okay. to consider him a friend. Okay, so you, you've only met him a couple of times, right? 
Well, I mean, I've, I've met I've met him a few yeah I've met him a few times and I've interacted with him through organizations, um, but yeah I wouldn't consider uh, him a friend not but that's not for because of any ill will towards him it's just from the standpoint of you know when I have interacted with him it's not been from the standpoint of like oh let's go and uh, let's go hang out and uh, you know get lunch at uh, at a burger joint it's more from the standpoint of you know we've been interacting with you know with members of the community. I, I understand. I understand. Okay, Miss Faruqi, the same question to you, please. If I, um, I have known Dale since uh, he was the uh, um, he was on the commission of Lauder um, Lauder Day Lakes. Um, I, I'm sorry, I, I'm mixing up. And then uh, county commissioner. So I have uh, known him and seen him doing uh, community work and involved in politics, especially South Florida politics. Um, I wouldn't call it friendship as, um, either, but um, I have um, worked with him on different issues uh, within the county. Um, um, as an elected official, he has helped a lot of um, um, so many times uh, to different communities. So not necessarily a friend, but he's been in uh, South Florida politics for so long, and um, he has been an elected official. So um, he is, um, I would say, someone who really works in the community. Steve is frozen on my end. I don't know if you guys see him as frozen too. Yeah. Yeah. I do. Um, well, we're, we're reaching the end of our time. Um, so I wanted to uh, give uh, both of you a chance to kind of make a, a closing argument, an elevator pitch. Um, basically, take a minute. And, um, and I want to assure you too that since this is being recorded, Steve will see the entire thing. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, he's back. He's rejoined. Steve, you there? Yeah. Yes, I am. Yep. Uh, okay. I was just going to, uh, I was just okay. going to have them, uh, uh, give a, uh, uh, give a, give a, a wrap up for their candidacy, uh, you know, a minute or two each, unless you had any more questions. Uh, no, I don't have any more questions. So, so let's see it along that route. Um, uh, why don't we just go in alphabetical order and Ms. Faruqi, you, you should go first. Um, first of all, thank you so much for having me tonight to give me an opportunity to speak. Um, as I said, I'm not a political dynasty. Uh, I am someone who has worked uh, throughout my uh, life, um, grassroots, and uh, that's what my campaign is about. Um, taking care of people, taking care of the issues that uh, really affects our day-to-day -day life. Um, um, I believe I'm the best qualified candidate in this campaign based on my experiences and life experiences, the thin and thick that I have been through uh, uh, living in Broward with uh, different communities. And that's why my outreach, and I'm not new to, to um, any of um, the, uh, the people living in the district. I've been around, people have seen me. Um, so I'm there for you and I will always be accessible. Um, and um, I really um, encourage everyone to use the voice. The vote is our voice. Please go ahead and vote in the election. Um, vote by mail, a ballot's already been dropped and also uh, um, early voting would start uh, August 13th and election day is August 23rd. I have put out a lot of information um, regarding um, uh, election, uh, how to find the precincts on my social media. Uh, please uh, take advantage of those links and um, there's a district map there um, and uh, just have your voice heard and uh, have your vote count. Um, Saima Faruqi and I really uh, encourage everyone and request everyone for their vote and support um, Saima Faruqi for District 97. Go ahead, Mr. Scurry. Yes. Uh Yes. Yeah, so, well, first, I also would like to you know, thank the Sun Sentinel for the opportunity to uh, sit before you this morning and to uh, present my ideas and and pitch and explain why why I would be the uh, best representative for for the new House District 97. Uh, as 
I guess as I've said many, many times before, you know, to whom much is given, you know, much is required. Uh, as a you know, lifelong Brad resident, you know, and, and someone who's not from a political dynasty of, of any sort of anything, I believe that um, even though I'm not from, you know, I'm not from a political dynasty of, of any kind, but I am from a you know very deeply rooted you know within the community. You know, I've lived here all my life, and and I've had you new know, extensive family that have been in the area you know, for, for generations. And I point that out simply for us to point to show that, you know, I understand the issues that affect our community and the issues that the past issues that we've uh, faced as well. And I believe that our represent, that our community deserves the best representation that, you know, that we can get. And um, I have, you know, prepared for, for this job, you know, effectively all my life. I prepared for it in part because you know as someone that was you know you know civically engaged as a as a youngster in high school and then in college you know I was involved in things and then as someone that then followed through and continued on to you know law to law school and then you return to Florida I would have I mean and then and then designed to stay in Brad County and and work after you know getting my professional degrees you know I you know come I you know have a very deep understanding of the issues that affect us and i would be able to be an effective new representative to ensure that uh we can get better paying jobs in our district that we can get more affordable housing within the community and that we can get better health care options i know that it won't be easy uh, especially because you know, we'd be in the minority party but very likely but I would say that I would just draw upon uh, my own life experiences. You know, I've been a minority in most you know, circumstances that I've dealt with. In elementary school, I was one of only uh, two black students uh, out of the, my entire class, and yet, uh, and yet, I was able to use uh, those differences, you know, my different experiences, and to be able to you know, still thrive in in an environment that many would consider to be either problematic, uh, but, and therefore I could you draw on those experiences to be able to ensure that my district has uh, effective uh, homegrown representation. And so I feel that you know, as the candidate that you know, is, you know, has lived in this district all of his life, and the district that, and as the candidate that you know, is still living within the district and that is still you know, going door to door, uh, going to the community and who lives in the community every day. And okay. I feel that I would be the best choice for the voters of District 97. All right. Mr. Scurry, thanks. Uh, Ms. Faruqi, thank you so much for your time today as well. And we wish thank you both so good much. luck. And thanks, for, thanks for participating in this uh, interview today. With the thank, thank you. Thank you both. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye.